like migrants, seabirds require multiple habitats to, um, to, to survive. So they need to be able to find food at sea, but they also need secure breeding sites where they can breed in peace. And so both of those habitats are under pressure in various ways. Uh, at sea, some of the big problems are pollution and then interaction with fisheries. Uh, and we have two big problems with fisheries. One is accidental bycatch, and that one we can do quite a lot about. But the, the, the trickier one to get a handle on is where you've got competition between fisheries and birds for the same food. And obviously that's a much more difficult conflict to resolve. And then when we come to islands, uh, fortunately, in South Africa, at least, all of our breeding sites are formally protected uh, through legislation and, and quite well managed. But we do have this problem of introduced predators at some of our islands. And in particular, uh, we had a problem with cats on Marion Island. And fortunately, we managed to get rid of the cats, thanks to the efforts of Martin Bester and his team from the University of Pretoria. But with the removal of cats, we've now seen this increase in mouse attacks, particularly on albatrosses and at Gough, where it's been happening for 10 years or more, we know that when the albatross are being attacked, all the other birds are being attacked as well. It's just harder to see it because it's happening underground because all, most of the other birds that are susceptible to this kind of thing are breeding in burrows underground. And it's interesting that the mice on Marion have discovered this new technique for attacking large albatross chicks, whereas on Gough, it's really a problem with the small downy chicks or the medium-sized downy chicks. But uh, on Marion, they, they've actually started attacking the heads where the feathers are shorter. And we thought that this was a, a real breakthrough for them. But just very recently, in fact, the end of 2015, it's just been reported that mice are now attacking adult lace and albatrosses on Midway Island. And there they're still managing to attack them on the backs, which is where most of the attacks typically happen. My name is Arjun Amar. I'm a senior lecturer at the Percy Fitzpatrick Institute uh, at the University of Cape Town. My interests are principally around uh, avian conservation with a focus on raptors particularly. Most of the research I undertake is on raptors, uh, both their conservation and their ecology as well as their evolution. So we have a number of projects. We work on uh, black sparrow hawks around the, the Cape Peninsula. We're using those to understand all kinds of questions in relation to evolution. They are polymorphic species, which allows us to explore why we have these, both these two morphs existing in the same place. They're living in an urban environment, so we can ask questions about how species cope within urban populations. And they've recently colonised and expanded the Cape Peninsula, so we can ask questions about how species cope when they arrive in new habitat types. So here at Lab, I've been uh, talking a little bit about work that uh, my PhD student, Verum van Eden, has been doing to try and understand the reason for the decline of the Marshall he Eagle, uh, both across South Africa, but particularly here in Kruger National Park, where the population has declined over the last 20 years by around about 50%. So he's been attaching GPS devices to both juveniles and adults to get a range of information that we don't know about this species. For example, how far the species disperse, the kind of habitats they require, and what are the key causes of mortality for this species. My name is Susie Cunningham, I'm a researcher at the Fitzpatrick Institute at the University of Cape Town. Our researchers are studying aspects of physiology and behaviour and how these change as air temperatures rise so that we can understand how birds are going to respond to climate change. And across a wide variety of species these researchers have found that at high temperatures birds seek shade to keep cool but in doing this they reduce their foraging efficiency which has important consequences for their ability to maintain body mass and to breed successfully. So overall we discover that there is huge variation between birds in both physiology and behaviour responses to heat stress and the consequences that these are likely to have for the ability of our birds to cope with climate change. Hi, my name is Andrew de Bloch. I'm a master's student at the Fitzpatrick Institute of African Ornithology. My work focuses on the impacts of human activities on water birds. At the Huerp Nature Reserve, they have a very large coastal lagoon uh, called the Huerp Flay, which has large water bird populations. Uh, as a result of the water birds, it's been designated as a Ramsar site and a bird life important bird area. And my work has been looking at how birds respond to the boats on the flay 
including a tourist pontoon boat and a kayak. So I've been going all over the flay looking at how birds respond to these different boats. And from my, from my data and my study, we're going to be looking at how best to do boat tours at the Hoop, how to do them sustainably with the least impact, and how to protect the birds to the best of effect.